Skip, this was your preseason AFC mm -hmm. championship prediction. Who wins? You got I got – right. What's that? At least you got one thing right. Well, I got the Cowboys the number one seed. You got to give me credit. Nobody even had them in the playoffs. Don't I get any credit for that? Credit make oh, enemies. Yeah, credit makes enemies. <laughs> okay, back to Joy's question. Thank you very much. I think this is going to be a very close, lower scoring game that also could be, de be decided by a last second field goal or at least a late one. And if I were a betting man, which I am not, I would take the six points and I would take Pittsburgh. But I am definitely taking Tom Brady in Foxborough to win the football game 23 to 20. I have told you since we, the inception of this show on September the 6th, Tom Brady on a season long mission to get even with the Roger Goodell who tried to frame and railroad him during deflate gate. I believe that Roger Goodell was willing to sacrifice the great Tom Brady legacy as he entered his 39th birthday year in, in the, late in, the, in his career and try to wrongly convict Tom Brady to punish the Patriots for their history of cheating. That's exactly what I think happened. I believe that's what Tom Brady thought happened. So, so and Before you go, yes. so you believe the commissioner went out on this alone. What part do you think the other 31 owners played in this decision? I don't know for sure. It's a very good question, but I'm sure they were mostly in, in cahoots, if you will, okay. here. Yeah, they were backing the commissioner, who obviously does mostly their bidding. Exactly. And I thought it was very interesting that I saw an NFL Network promo for the two championship games, and it featured three quarterbacks, but it didn't feature the fourth quarterback, and Tom Brady was missing from the ad. And I don't know, maybe it was just an oversight, but... I don't think so. I don't think so. I NFL think they'll be in petty. Eh, maybe a little petty. I think that's beyond petty. That's just, <laughs> uh, that's, that's just ugly. Yeah. yeah. So, as I've said about Tom Brady, the one thing that frustrates me occasionally about him, he won't say anything publicly. He won't vow publicly to get even. He always lets his actions speak. And now it's time for his actions to speak the loudest. They have spoken very loudly since he finally gave up and accepted his suspension. 28 touchdowns during the regular season to only two interceptions. It's the greatest touchdown to interception ratio in the history of the National but Football League. But Nick Foles, not to cut you off, Skip, mm -hmm. but Nick Foles did once throw 27 touchdowns and two interceptions. So don't make it seem like this is something that we've never seen before. Okay, but 28 to 2 in only 12 games is, is the record. Well, if he'd have played all of them, how do we know he wouldn't have had more interceptions? No, he probably would have had 38 to 2, knowing him this year. See what you this, did? This see what you did, this skill? Yeah, yeah, I see exactly what I did. Remember, he's 39 years of age. And not that he wanted, obviously, Rob Gronkowski to go down on November 27th, but Rob's been gone now. Gronk's been gone for the last six games. And all of a sudden, Tom Brady has the opportunity to prove a lot of doubters wrong. A lot of people say, he wins with Gronk. He's uncoverable. You can put three guys on him and you can't stop him. Now there is no Gronkowski. So all of a sudden, Tom Brady, who's a smart man, knows his history. He knows that his legacy could even grow now without Gronkowski to the point that if he can beat Pittsburgh at home and beat Aaron Rodgers in the Super Bowl, that his legacy might grow to the point that it eclipses the great Joe Montana's in some people's eyes. That would be debatable mm -hmm. because obviously Tom's won only five Super Bowls. Four. Four Super Bowls. <laughs> but he did lose two technically, but not really. But technically Yeah, no, no, two. really. Yeah. Ain't no technically, okay, really. You know, he really Joe lost. Was, Joe was four for four. Should have had four MVPs, but that's a whole nother. With issue. zero INTs. Yeah, you got it. So now that Martellus Bennett keeps coming up smaller and smaller, and we know that Chris Hogan's a little nicked up, and Malcolm Mitchell's been nicked up, and Amendola's been nicked up, it's really down to Tom Brady throwing to Julian Edelman, the college quarterback seventh round draft choice, or bust. That's it. Tom Brady has a chance to go win a Super Bowl with Julian Edelman as his go-to guy, his number one receiver. You believe in that? Wouldn't wouldn't that? Wouldn't that even raise the eyebrows of one Shannon Sharp? Skip, Wouldn't that be impressive to you? Skip, the reason why you grade him so high 
is because he's won a lot of his Super Bowls without a number one, a okay. true number one receiver. Yep. That's why he's graded so high. Because when you look at Joe, you say, well, Joe, you had Joe, you had Jerry Rice, the greatest receiver of all time. Yep. When you look at Terry Bradshaw, you say, Terry, you had two Hall of Fame he receivers did. and you had a Hall of Fame running he back. Did. When you look at Troy, you say, Troy, but you had a Hall of Fame running back, a Hall of Fame wide receiver. When you look at Tom Brady, he's had none of these things. Okay. This is why he gets so much credit, and rightfully so. But the thing is, Skip, at the end of the day, do you win, do you lose? He's won more than he's lost. So right now, I still have Joe because, like you tell me, Michael Jordan was 6-for-6. Six six. Uh, Joe Montana is 4-0. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. He is, and I agree. Now, back to what Tom Brady is working with on the other side of the ball. Obviously, New England's defense has been efficiently very effective because they are the number one scoring defense, defense and points allowed. But help me out here. Do you see a game-changing star anywhere on that defense? Anybody pop your eyes? Does anybody jump off your screen when you're watching them? No. They don't have any one takeover guy, right? Right. This is a solo star team, a single star team. It's really, in the end, Tom Brady or bust. He has to play at an extremely high level for this team to survive in advance. And I believe that's exactly what they're about to do, survive at home and advance. All I know is Tom Brady, Foxborough, enough said. Close game, lower scoring, maybe last second field goal. I'm going 23 to 20, Tom Brady. Well, the thing is, this is what you know going into Foxborough. You're going to need to score somewhere between 25 and 27 points because you automatically assume with Tom Brady playing at home and in the confines that he's very familiar with, the weather, he knows what's going on. So you go in there with the mindset Somehow, we got to get four touchdowns on the board. Some way. Some way, somehow. And when you look at Coach Belichick, what he's always been able to do, whatever you do well, he takes that away from you. Now, if you look at the playoffs, Le'Veon Bell has the two best back-to-back -back games for guys starting the playoffs in NFL history. He's over 300 yards rushing. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, Coach Belichick, he's on that same principle that Coach Saban, or Coach Saban has the same principle as Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. Shut the run, force them to do other things. Now, think about what you're asking when you stop the run, what you're trying to do. You're saying, you know what? Ben Roethlisberger, we know you've won two Super Bowls. You've been to three. We want you to throw the ball to Antonio Brown, mm -hmm. Eli Rogers, and Colts, and to Jesse James. That's what we want. I think Ben Roethlisberger is up to the challenge. Also, unless you have a historically great defense like the Broncos had last year, mm -hmm. you're going to probably have to have a quarterback that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tom Brady and probably match him pass for pass. Mm -hmm. I believe Ben Roth Roethlisberger, where he is in his career currently, I believe he can do that. Le'Veon Bell is, 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 the, is the, the X factor to me mm -hmm. because a lot of times you get guys to try to simulate what he does. The hardest thing was that when we had to play, prepare for Barry, Barry Sanders, who could do that? Who could you pitch the ball to and say, okay, do whatever you want to do. This is saying a lot football. Just run wherever you want to run. Le'Veon Bell, he'll take the ball and he'll walk to the hole. Normally when guys get to the hole, they explode through the hole, but he'll walk through the hole and he, he lulls people to sleep and like, okay, well, he's about to pop out here. Well, you see the hole there and you think he's going to pop out there and next thing you know, he's all the way backside. He's the most patient, the extreme patient runner that I've ever seen. Mm. But Skip, he, wait, he's changed the NFL the way Steph Curry changed the NBA. I'm not going right? that. I'm not going that far. Neither should he have gone that far. <laughs> but he is a very unique talent. But he also can catch the ball out of the backfield. And you try to minimize James White and Deion Lewis. You didn't want to mention those guys, but they're a very valuable part of what the New England Patriots mm -hmm. do offensively, especially throwing the football. But <clears throat> I got the Steelers in a very, very close ball game. Um, I like what I'm seeing defensively. The reason why it was so hard for me to stay with this team, Skip, is because offensively I knew if they were healthy, they would be here at the end. Because for big three players, I'll take Big Ben, Antonio Brown, and Le'Veon Bell against any other big three in all the NFL, and that includes Dallas's big three. Hmm, thinking about that one. Oh, so you think Dez Bryant's better than Antonio Brown? You think Dak Prescott is better than Ben Roethlisberger? I think Ezekiel Elliott is way better than Le'Veon Bell. That's what I think. That's That, that closes the case. And Dak is right there with Ben because Dak outbend Ben at Pittsburgh. I saw it with my own two eyes. Did you did you see that the last 42 seconds? I think, me. I think that measure that they passed on the ballot on November mm -hmm. 8th 
yeah. where now it's legal to have recreational marijuana. I think mm -hmm. you may have been partaking. If no, you think I, I the Big Three in even, Dallas... Never even experiment. If you think you know? the Big Three in Dallas is better than the Big Three you know? in Pittsburgh. Sorry. But, Skip, if you go back, since Bud Dupree has mm -hmm. got back inserted because he was injured, since he's gotten back into the lineup, this is a different defense. Okay. He, so, so isn't this the first time that Tom's had to deal with the big three, all three together? Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Because he's played... He, you remember, when they won the Super Bowl, they opened up, Le'Veon was suspended. Mm -hmm. You remember they played earlier this year. They did. Big Ben was hurt. Wow. So now you get an opportunity to see the big three... The firepower. Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. So Pittsburgh has won nine straight games. Obviously, New England struggled, albeit that they covered against the Houston Texans last week mm -hmm. in Foxborough. Yet... The harder I look at Pittsburgh, the the less worried I am because just off the fact that this is the first time the big three is together against Tom, that, that could flat out scare me. But when I look harder at what happened to Pittsburgh all year long, when you did give up on them at some point, mm -hmm. they were hit and miss, they wound up 10th in points scored, which I, I don't quite get. Something was missing mm -hmm. because Ben didn't have his best year. He was ninth overall in QBR. So... I look at what happened. The Dolphins went in there, a warm-weather team that clearly in the first half just didn't want to tackle anybody, and it got out of hand. And then Pittsburgh goes up to Kansas City, and I told you all year, Kansas City just can't score. They had lost two late home games in which they scored 17 and 17, and they managed 16 against Pittsburgh. I'm not that impressed with that win, even though it was at Arrowhead. But, but at Arrowhead, they've lost their home field mystique. Yes. You know, that's now, what, five straight playoff losses at Arrowhead for the Kansas City Chiefs. So then New England has played a weak schedule. Well, look at Pittsburgh. As they got on their roll, six of their last seven opponents did not make the playoffs. I'm not sure about them. So I'm, I'm not dead sure about New England's offense when it's just mostly Brady to Edelman. You can probably thwart that or at least stop it, may, I mean, control it. But I'm going to throw this one last point in. I still think the Antonio Brown situation, the Facebook Live situation, will have some subtle negative impact on the mindset of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it will be just enough because I have high regard for their coach and for the way they've come back together mm -hmm. that I still say Brady will be good enough to overcome them, especially in Foxborough.